is that we don't even realize how we're operating under, you know, this falsehood of who we are, who we should be um, when it comes to religion. So our last, um, our last conference, uh, I think it was Dr. Renita Weems who talked about how religion was created to keep us quiet um, in, in those ways, right? Um, I, I want to know from you, and what what advice would you give for women who are who are talking about these things, or working through these things, and struggling through these things, who are trying to shed the lies yeah. from yeah. off of them when it comes to even the work they're doing in an academy or on the street yeah. and different things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think one is to allow yourself to do it, right, and to question everything, right, and just really to allow yourself and to know that um, that the divine is capable of withstanding your questions, right, that those, um, um, God, I don't think is in any way um, threatened by the questions, and I think really um, the, the question of, you know, what, 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 what feeds your spirit is the other thing, right, and so for me, you know, my own process has been one of saying what feeds my spirit, and for years, I hid the things that fed my spirit, right? Or I kind of did an apologetics for them, right? If I even said, well, okay, well, I'm a Christian, but I do like this little thing, right? You know, and so, um, mm -hmm. so it became for me really questioning, like, what really feeds my spirit and give myself permission to go after that which feeds my spirit um, and makes me feel that sense of connection with the divine and, um, and just starting to be unapologetic about that. And some people, you know, I'm, you know, as a tenured faculty member, I have a little bit of privilege in terms of being able to um, be more bold with my claims about that. But um, people don't always, right? Even like a lot of the guilt. So we have to release so much guilt and shame around this, right? So uh, some of the language that the church has that shames us, even in terms of just being within Christianity, but not having a firm um, allegiance to a denomination, mm -hmm. right? Or to a church, right? The way we shame church hopping, right? Uh, denomination, hop, all of that, you know? And like, I finally came to the point where I was like, I'm denominationally promiscuous. I <laughs> feel <laughs> like, you know what? Yes, yes, yes. Everywhere that I, I go and I feel like I encounter the divine there and I feel God's presence there. And mm -hmm. like, I'm like, you know, God never blessed this and intended this denominational mess anyway. So why should I have to act like this is the way things should be? Mm -hmm. Everybody has, I think, a little bit of the truth. Everybody has some some bad things. Everybody has some good things. And so um, I think for me, being able to just reject some of the shaming, reject a lot of the boundaries that the church and the academy puts on me about what's okay. Um, and um, and then just learning to be real open about that and say, let me, let me explore that. Yeah, yeah, let me explore that. Let me be open to that. Let me see how my, my spirit feels about that. And if, if I'm resisting, let me probe that and say <laughs> why, right? If I see this sister do um, an, a, a ritual that comes out of condom bloy or something, like why, wh what am I resisting? If there's resistance there, what's that about? Um, but also, like, is there part of my spirit that left? Like, is there is there something that was like, oh, yeah, I connect with that. Um, I think for me, it was also being honest about, like, some of the family traditions, right? Like, a lot of us, we have, within African-American families, we have these streams of um, these kind of African um, ancestral traditions mm -hmm. that we can't name, but we know there's, they're part of our family spirituality. Um, and the academy has taught us not to, to, to name those, right? Um, our church might have even taught us not to name that. So, Call you witches. I, yes, yeah. And so learning how to, um, to own that and be like, that's just part of who I am and part of the tradition. And then I think the other thing is finding, if you can find community um, of, of people who are, who are really willing to do the same, I think increasingly there are people who are. Um, and there are spaces that, that are open to that and people doing really innovative, um, soul-nourishing work that says, let's draw from all the streams that inform us 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's there, and there are good resources out there. Um, um, my pastoral care colleague, um, Dwayne Bidwell, has written a book called When One Religion Isn't Enough right um and and i'm like yes like so so to even find affirmation in that and when he wrote that book i'm like somebody's naming you that for some of us one isn't enough (laughs) like we we need to find different ways of connecting because we know god is bigger than any of our religious traditions and so Mm -hmm. um to get to spirituality but i think we have to give ourselves permission Mm -hmm. first of all Mm -hmm. we have to understand everybody's not going to come along with us and people Mm -hmm. are going to critique us and we have to be okay with that. Um, and, and people that we love and who, who love us are going to critique us and not understand us. And we have to be okay with that. We have to have a, a good enough sense of our identity that we're willing to do, um, we're willing to do um, as, as, as Katie Cannon put it, we're willing to do the work that our soul must, must have, right? Like we need to do that work. Um, and so I think we have to learn how to not allow other people to dictate our spiritual lives as much. Um, that doesn't, I mean, does that mean anything and everything goes? I don't know. Right. Like part Mm -hmm. of this is experimental and we're doing a new thing and, you know, we'll probably make some missteps and at some point we'll do some things and later on be like, what was I thinking in that phase? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like that was crazy. Yes. I, was, I was with some other stuff. Yes. But that's it part of your crazy. path, right? Like if that's part of the path, that's part of the path. And so uh, just like, just get on your path, no matter what mm-hmm. that is, just get on your path and be on it and see where it takes you. And yeah. where you are now may not be where you end up. Um, maybe it'll teach you some things um, that you really love about the church, right? I've learned some things I really love about the church through my own process of liberation. Like mm-hmm. I've been, it's helped me be clear about what I need from the church, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it's also made me clear about what the church can't give me and what I'm going to have to do on my own, right?